On my right is a device that is half Ryzen Mini PC, half NAS, and 100% better than I was expecting it to be. Today's video is brought to you by me and the all new craftcomputing.store. There's no better way to help support the channel than by picking up a set of coasters, whiskey stones, rocks glasses, or any of the other accessories we have to help set up your own home bar. And it's all designed 100% in-house. Visit craftcomputing.store and start drinking like a pro. Cheers, everyone. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. This is the AUSTAR NAS and Router Mini PC, and it was not the device that I was expecting it to be. By that, most NAS or router combos that I have with two bays usually come in the form of an Intel Celeron, be it an N5105 or something similar. If you get really lucky, someone might toss in an Alder like N100. Instead, AUSTAR opted to go the Ryzen Mobile route, including a Ryzen 5 5500U, 6-core, 12-threaded APU, and a Vega 7 graphics chip on board. Standard disclosure on this one applies. AUSTAR did send out the mini NAS PC for me to take a look at, and it does not have to go back. But like all reviews on the channel, no money changed hands. AUSTAR has no input over the context of this video, nor will they be seeing it before you do. Going for the Ryzen APU puts this up in the $300 performance tier of mini PCs from Mini's Forum and the like. But AUSTAR also didn't forget to include components that we normally only find on NAS and router boxes. We've got dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports from an Intel 211i network controller. We've also got a pair of 3.5 inch drive bays complete with SATA backplane. That means this is slightly more expensive than the Celeron-based NAS router combos, and also slightly more expensive than the $300 mini PCs, but you get all of those features in one box. At a $399 price tag, you also get 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 memory and a 512 gigabyte NVMe drive. The AO Star ships with Windows 11 Home 22H2, but as this is just an x86 PC, you can load on whatever operating system you'd like. Whether you're looking for a mini PC with a couple hard drive bays or a headless server to run silently on your desk, I think this is a PC that would be right at home in either situation. Design-wise, there is an obvious inspiration at play here with the vertically aligned motherboard. The AOSTAR has a nearly identical footprint to the 2013 Mac Pro, but the comparison is even more ironic when we get into system benchmarks. See, the Ryzen 5500U might be the most Mac Pro-like performance that you can get today in a new CPU. We'll explore performance more in just a couple minutes. Overall construction on the AOSTAR is Okay, the system is built with inexpensive plastics, with the only structure being the metal tray that holds the motherboard, along with the two three and a half inch drive cages. For the price tag, I really have no complaints, especially for a system that will likely spend its entire life on someone's desk. The top panel vent has a handy faux leather pull tab and is held in place with just a couple magnets. Removing that and you get access to the dual three and a half inch drive caddies, which are completely toolless for installing your three and a half inch drives of choice. And with your drives installed, they should drop right in place. Just like that. Along with those two drive caddies, you can also find the six screws which hold the entire side panel in place. Those screws are the only thing that you need to completely disassemble the system, so getting into it to do repairs or upgrades is actually fairly trivial. Inside, they put a fairly large heatsink and fan combo on the Ryzen 5500U, so cooling is not going to be an issue here. Around the back side of the motherboard are your dual channel DIMMs, in this case with a pair of 8GB sticks of DDR4. There's also an Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6 card here, should you ever want or need to replace the wireless card. And again, we've also got a 512GB NVMe drive installed, but there are a total of two M.2 slots, so expansion is very much a possibility. Between the plastic construction and the ease of upgradability, I'm starting to think this isn't just a new Apple product. Similar to the trash can Mac sitting next to it, there is a fan on the bottom of this PC to draw in fresh air. However, that's not the only fan in the system. There's also the dedicated CPU blower style fan, and all the hot air is vented out the top. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the overall design. It's easy to disassemble, part choices are excellent, and it has more than enough cooling to keep everything running smoothly. Getting into performance, comparing the 6-core 5500U to a 12-core Mac Pro Tower feels like an odd thing to do. 
but given the physical similarities, I figured it would be something fun to look at. Funny enough, overall system performance is nearly identical between these two systems, both in terms of CPU compute and graphical performance. In Cinebench R23, it's not even a fair fight when it comes to single-threaded performance, with the Ryzen literally doubling up the Xeon with a score of 1183 versus just 591 on the E5 2697 V2. Extrapolating those results out, if you take 6 cores versus 12 cores, that means multi-threaded performance should land at a near tie between the two systems. But it is the Xeon that still holds the slight edge, scoring an 8285 against the Ryzen's 6639. Still, that's incredibly impressive considering the Ryzen 5500U is just a 15 watt mobile chip and it's going toe to toe with a 130 watt Xeon, even if the Xeon is from 2013. And as a reminder, this is the top CPU that was offered in the Mac Pro. The stock CPU was a Xeon E5 1620V2, which only had four cores and would be absolutely trounced by the 5500U in all tests. But to put this more into perspective for home server use, this six core 15 watt 5500U is roughly equivalent to an E5 2670V2 Ivy Bridge 10 core Xeon when it comes to multi-threaded and virtualization performance. So if you've been running a similarly spec rack mount server, you could replace it with this tiny little desktop PC without losing any virtualization performance. Pretty cool. For graphics, the 2013 Mac Pro is running a Radeon Fire Pro D300. Well, actually there's two D300s in there, but outside of Final Cut Pro and Aperture, I'm not aware of a single application that was able to take advantage of the second GPU. So for the most part, it just sits there idle. One major downside of the D300 is it has just two gigabytes of GDDR5 for video memory, but it was also the only GPU option from Apple for the 2013 Mac Pro that didn't kill itself from heat buildup, making it the best option if you're still running one of these today. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 5500U has a Vega 7 graphics processor on board, and it shares memory with the host, meaning we're stuck with DDR4 speeds, but the GPU can access basically as much memory as it needs to. Again, nothing too scientific here, but this was actually the perfect use of the OpenGL test from Cinebench R15 to compare the 2013 graphics processor against a modern day counterpart. Surprisingly enough, it was the Vega 7 coming out with the victory with a score of 7612 versus the Radeon D300 and its score of 7167. While I was hoping the Ryzen CPU would compare favorably to the decade old Xeon, and it did, I still didn't expect the Vega integrated graphics to beat out a desktop class GPU, even one from so long ago. An odd comparison I know, but it's always fun to see how far technology has advanced over the years. While the Mac Pro was one of the most maligned and controversial PCs ever produced by Apple, they do have their fans that still use them today. In fact, this is the Mac Pro that I use to do all of my laser cutting for craftcomputing.store. It runs every single day out in my garage and it does so without a problem. Now there is a downside worth mentioning here for the AU Star. It uses a 19 volt power brick and barrel jack for its power. Any PC that requires less than 65 watts of total power, I'd much rather see USB-C as an option today. While there is a USB-C port present, it doesn't allow for power input, and I feel that's just a missed opportunity. As for my overall impressions of the AOSTAR NAS and router mini PC, it's definitely won me over. At $399, it's around $100 more than other Ryzen 5500U Nook form factor PCs on the market but it does have some serious advantages as well, like dual 2.5 gigabit networking, dual NVMe slots, and a pair of three and a half inch drive bays. Not everyone is going to need all of the features available here, which means a mini PC might make more sense for you. The AOSTAR is more expensive than Celeron NAS boxes and more expensive than Ryzen mini PCs, but I think the combination of the features at play here, and especially the performance, places it in a unique position. And for what it offers, I like the $399 price tag. If you are interested in a modern day Mac Pro clone, I will have a link to the AU Star NAS down in the video description. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on the social medias at Craft Computing. And if you wanna help support the channel, head on over to craftcomputing.store, grab yourself a nucleated pint glass, or now we're carrying hops and brews merch, so help me. That's gonna do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone.
beer for today is from Crux Fermentation Project over in Bend, Oregon. It is the Glow Stick Hazy IPA. Seem to be getting a lot of uh, huge citrus beers lately, like tropical citrus beers. I don't know if that's just me picking them out or if it's a trend I wasn't aware of. It's a Glow Stick IPA. I have had this IPA before, but this morning I have a little bit of uh, some sinus congestion. I will say my taste buds are not firing with all the neurons they normally do. And uh, I'm not particularly enjoying this brew. I remember it more by the smell of it <laughs> as, a, uh, as what I tasted before. What I mean by that is I'm, I'm getting like those super tropical citrusy notes up front, your, your pineapple and your blood orange and whatnot. But this morning I'm not tasting those. What I'm getting is this kind of flat, mellow, unenjoyable IPA. I think that's on me this morning though. So I'm gonna give this one a pass because I remember really liking it. 